What impeccable timing this CM Punk has getting fired. Because AEW Collision, this was the week that uh, that football started. And the show died. 345,000 viewers, 0.11, down 30% from the week prior. It was the go-home show. And uh, it went head-to-head with WWE Payback on Peacock. And also, where is it? It went up against a college football game. I could have sworn I saw this in here. Yeah, it definitely went up against college but, football. Well, I mean, I'm trying what to find the exact number, to? but the exact number was something like, this game did like 19 million viewers. Yeah. Just wait. 19 million viewers. Wait till the Iron Bowl. Yeah. So from now until, uh, I think it's like mid-January, uh, do not expect anything, anything. When it comes to collision ratings. Well, college-wise, you, you really than, only have to wait till around Thanksgiving. Well, that's I mean, true. That's what they need to get. But then you have the thing, and I don't know how it works. When does Christmas fall this year? Do they get a show? December 25th. Be... <laughs> Is it on a Saturday, though? Oh, are they going that. to be bumped for holiday programming? Do they have to worry about that on top of things? And then by that point, then you have basketball. The NBA has started, and granted... The NBA season for a lot of people doesn't kick off till after the All-Star break because so many guys miss games and things like that. But it's just another shovel on top of dealing with things on a Saturday. This coming Saturday, they have no key games they're going against, it doesn't look like, Wisconsin and Washington State. But the fact of the matter is... That's on ABC, and it's going to get a bunch of people just because it's on ABC. So there's a zillion other games regionally they'll have to deal with, and it's just something that they're going to have to suffer through, which makes it even worse when there's a high-level Christmas WWE is a show. Monday. Well, they're lucky that way. Thank God I've got all of these little... Uh... Which means we'll have a tape draw. Fauntleroy has gone AI. You aware of that? Oh, you don't yeah. do that. He had a lot of artificial stupidity before, but now he's artificially intelligent. Did you know, I told the story on the Lance show, but um, we did that um, Q&A in London. Mm -hmm. And the audio is on the site, but it's it's, uh, apparently unlistenable. And for those of you wondering, apparently, like we had we had over 200 people there. And we had a very specific start time because the bar was going to open like I forget hour and a half, two hours later, whatever. And, uh, and like, right before we started, they, they had some serious error with the audio, and it could not be fixed in time, and we had to start. So if you're wondering, like, it should not be like this in the future. There's nothing that can be done. It just, it was, it was not good. But were, there were no microphones? Or somebody asked about, uh, about AI. How would that affect the, uh, like, the observer or whatever? <laughs> and I had this idea, which I like, because it was you my would. idea. Uh-huh. And the idea was... What Dave should do every week is have, like, chat, GPT, or whatever, some AI program, write whatever the top story is of the week, and then Dave could go by, go through and just, like, be Dave and, like, correct everything. I think that'd be incredible. But anyway, so I was on Google today. Can you imagine feeding a bunch of observers into AI and imagining the results when it comes to the punctuation? I was Googling something today, and actually I'll find out exactly what it said because it was, like, unusual. I'm going to Google uh, penguins. Penguins? I'm just typing in a word. Penguins. Hmm. Okay. And, of course, now it doesn't come up. Well, anyway, earlier today, when I, when I Googled something, how about uh, can penguins fly? Okay, here we go. So now there's this AI thing that generates generative AI, it says. Okay. Info quality may vary. So then, you know, AI generates an answer to your question. So it says here, no, penguins cannot fly. Although they have wings, their wings have evolved to help them swim. Penguins use their wings as flippers to propel and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I saw that and I thought, I should ask it something about wrestling. And so I asked, what was Brawl Out? Now, if you want to do this, you can do this. I'm not making this up. So I asked, what is Brawl Out? And this, this is what Generative AI wrote. Degenerative. <laughs> it, gave me, it gave me a report. I'm going to read that report to you now. All right. 
Brawl Out was a physical altercation between CM Punk and the Elite. The fight started after Punk gave a fiery promo during the AEW All Out Media Scrum. Three executive vice presidents confronted Punk in his locker room, leading to a brawl. A fight that became the talk of the pro wrestling world. The fight involved the three executive vice presidents, Trainer A. Steel, Punk's dog Larry, <laughs> and a group of producers. Oh, man. AI sucks. I hate it. I hate oh. it so much. I hate AI. I can't believe you would be for it. You are the kind of weirdo tyrant that would be for something like this. I am laughing in the face of Gannett newspapers who have crushed so many local papers around the country with their accusi or, or, uh, their, their buy-in of these papers, their acquiring of these papers. And then to have the gall to actually try to write high school sports with AI, actually breaking that out and, and unleashing that upon people. I am so happy that it blew up in their face. I hope it lights them on fire and they can go jump in a bowl of nothing to, to fix it. I hate it. I hate AI. Nobody has done anything entertaining with it except for the one guy with the Gorilla Monsoon stuff. Everybody else, it sucks. Why did WCW die? World Championship Wrestling began to decline in 1999 and closed its doors in March 2001. Many factors contributed to WCW's demise, including declining viewership. In March 2001, AOL Time Warner, WCW's owner, took Nitro and Thunder off television due to declining viewership. This cut off WCW's most important revenue stream. Poorly received storylines. WCW storylines were not well received. Hmm. The WWE's it Attitude Era yet. <laughs> became increasingly popular. Power struggles between executives and talent contributed to WCW's demise. WCW's success led to creative and financial mismanagement. And WCW let go of talent that became stars in the WWF. Bret Hart may have uh, helped work on that one. Anyway, there's a lot of interesting things I've learned that you can learn on... Uh, on on the internet <laughs> pretty neat huh it is this newfangled thing is kind of mind-blowing when you really stop and think about it oh man i got another thing i gotta talk about that i forgot about so yesterday on the brian and Vinny show we've been reviewing retro tna but it was a it was a best of show this week and so we decided we would watch something else so uh our emmy award winning co-host sean thought, you know, Terry Funk passed away and Bray Wyatt passed away, so why don't we watch two great matches to commemorate these these men? And so one of them was Terry Funk versus Ric Flair in an I Quit match, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And the other was The Shield versus The Wyatt Family from 2014 at Elimination Chamber. Ooh. So we watched these matches. And if you want the full reviews, obviously, it's last night. But there's two things that I got to mention about that, uh, three things, really about the Elimination Chamber match. First off, when you watch it, it was eight years ago. And if you think about, think about like 1998 WWE, WWF, versus like 1990 WWF, how insanely different, insanely different that eight years was from 1990 to 1998. Fact. But man, you watch that Elimination Chamber match, it's like watching a match today, aside from the fact that he no longer wears the flak jacket, Roman Reigns looks and works exactly the same. Seth Rollins pretty much looks and works almost exactly the same. He does less high-flying now, but he's basically exactly the same. And then you see Dean Ambrose, <laughs> and it's like, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I'm not sure that that's actually John Moxley. I mean... You gotta watch this match, dude. That's number one. Well, number two. For those of you, and I know you're on the chat right now, you tell me every day it's it, it sucks just as bad as always. WWE is not improved at all. You're you're wrong. I tell you every day. But go back and watch this match. And within about five minutes, actually not even that. Uh, sorry, five seconds. I nearly vomited because. This freaking zooming 
Like, it's so much better now. It is so much better. Watch this match and this freaking cutting and zooming. Like, it all of a sudden will be jarring to you how horrible it used to be compared to today. They're freaking like... It, it was like watching Okada do the Rainmaker pose. But like, all throughout the match, over and over again. It almost killed me. So thank God they've, they've like, chopped that dramatically. And then I forgot what the third point was. But those are the two, uh, those are the two big ones. Just how, how, how so much hasn't changed... But like certain things are 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 so much better now than they were back then. There have been positive changes to WWE. Oh, there have been absolutely. But I remember there was a show like ten years ago. Uh, Vic Sosa and Les Thatcher were doing their their show, and Vic is talking about like, man, you look at this show ten years ago. It looks exactly the same as now, and it's kind of the same way that the television show does look for, for the amount of things that have changed the things that they are steadfast on they're probably never going to do it until Don and vince are truly truly out of there and here we are 2023 the shield three of the top champions in this business and then anthony bowens starts talking about mr ass <laughs> he's in tears talking about mr ass one more time he says from your couch at home Scissor me, daddy ass. I wish they would have said something like, we called him on the ass phone. Remember how Gorilla Monsoon had the banana phone? Yeah. I just imagine a phone, an ass phone that they oh, used to call Billy I'm going to regret this Google search. <laughs> <laughs> For an article on Vice from April of 2016. <clears throat> the secret world of tiny phones that go inside your butt. Oh really? Well, wow, that's that's not quite what I was expecting. Nor wait a second. There's an article on this. Can you can you send me this article? Okay. All right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a minute. Now, if you hello, told me, hello, hello. Craig, please. What are we talking about? I don't know. Press or something. Okay. Collision. Collision. House of Black versus Darius Martin in action and Dreddy Lee Johnson. That's where you keep the phone. Sorry. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.